Hi everyone, I'm Richard and joining me is John Linneman. Hi Rich, how's it going? Yeah, not too bad. I'm looking here at some footage I captured, well, it was a couple of weeks back now for Forza Horizon 3 from Playground Games and Turn 10. So yeah, we're going to be looking at about uh, the first hour edited down somewhat. And yes, it's a really beautiful looking game. Now you saw this at E3, I believe, right, John? Yeah, I actually saw it running on both the Xbox One and on a PC in 4K. Yeah, I saw that presentation as well, or at least quite possibly a different version of it. But yeah, it was 4K and I think it was running in HDR as well and it was looking absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the impression I got. I think they showed the HDR version to me on Xbox, but on the PC, I'm not sure it was running that yet but they did have it connected up to one of those huge rigs with the steering wheel and all of the, uh, the, the motors and stuff connected, so you really feel like you're driving. It's kind of a cool little thing. Wow, that must have been fantastic. We only saw the uh, 4K version running on a, on a monitor. They gave a very quick demonstration, which I'll talk about later, but right now, well, this is the beginning part of the game, and what I really like about Horizon, and this one in particular, is the kind of intro sections to the game. They're kind of laying out their stall here in terms of what you can expect from the full game. So you're going to get a big bunch of different environments, a lot of different tests and cute little races, and it's just a really nice way to introduce the game. And I think from my perspective, it's just the kind of visual splendor of the game. It's just utterly spectacular. Yeah, actually, I think this is a nice uh, return to form, so to speak. Forza Horizon 2, I think it was a good looking game, but the color schemes and the chosen area where they went there, I don't think it was, it didn't have that eye popping look that I was kind of hoping for, but this with the bright colors and the contrast, it, it looks really remarkable. Yeah, they've gone for the kind of uh, Australian outback area this time around, and they actually had a really nice presentation where they were showing us a skybox. Apparently, they went to Australia with a big bunch of SLRs and were photographing the sky. Whoa. I actually have to talk to them about this because they were saying that the sky rendering is uh, absolutely revolutionary here. You kind of get a hint of it. It's kind of... Well, the thing about the skybox is it's always sort of background detail in a game, isn't it? Sure, and uh, what I'm wondering here is it's hard to tell from the video for me. I, I can't recall, but do the clouds and everything, are they simulated like we saw in Drive Club where it's all like a real-time thing, or is it more just like photography or images textures, if you will, thrown into the back. Well, that's something I'm going to have to investigate because one thing I saw on their 4K demo was they were actually had a really beautiful skybox with a double rainbow. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, now, if they've managed to mathematically calculate a rainbow, well, let alone a double rainbow, that would be quite spectacular. But uh, I think the point is that time of day is in here just as it was previously in Horizon Great. and uh, it really does look spectacular and obviously we're kind of only seeing it here in SDR and HDR, well I reckon a lot of this video we're going to be saying, well I wonder how this looks in HDR. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to become a recurring theme here over the next uh, few months with the proliferation of HDR content. Yeah. And this this looks fantastic in HDR as well, no doubt. Yeah, definitely. And I um, should say that we're getting a completely locked 30 FPS here. I mean, there's literally one frame dropped in this initial. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> one frame. There's a, there's a race coming up a bit later on where it's not quite as stable, but that is the exception rather than the rule. And I included that footage just to show that that frame rate isn't bulletproof they can you know it can drop slightly but that's coming up a bit later on but what we're looking at here is one of these cute races where you're supposed to be racing that guy in his jeep but he's getting like a bit of a helping hand from that chinook helicopter <laughs> so that helicopter actually follows the entire course and he's pretty much ahead for most of the race and then at the end uh, you see it getting dropped off and uh, and then the kind of race begins proper. There's some really nice features there. Did you see the uh, water effect there? Yeah, the water, it's sort of out of focus and everything as it dribbles down the camera lens. That's, that's neat. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously back in the day it was Forza Horizon 2 versus Drive Club and Drive Club's weather was on a completely different level. Oh, yeah. But obviously this is running a complete open world and Drive Club is kind of a lot more linear. So sure. you can kind of expect to see the difference there but yeah there's some really nice effects here with that you know when you're driving through the rivers and the water and such like and uh, a bit later on we'll also see sort of dynamic weather uh, where it's sort of teeming down with rain and it kind of looks quite impressive so it's something to look forward to later i think and i think uh, i mean the key i i see here is of course the fact that it hits 
that solid 30 frames per second. I think a lot of people, including myself, when they think of a 30 frames per second racing game, it's, you know, we always prefer 60, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can hit a completely stable 30 and you use some really nice motion blur in there and you make sure you handle the input latency side properly, I think it can still work out pretty well. Yeah, well, that's exactly what happened with Drive Club, really, wasn't it? Right, exactly. You had that tight lock on 30 FPS. You have the motion blur, and it enables visuals like this, which you wouldn't get otherwise. And it's actually quite interesting, I think, because um, at E3, I was watching the presentation for this. Obviously, it had co-op demoed at the time, which oh, yeah. we didn't actually get the chance to play. But, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just solid. You know, you're, you're seeing these level of visuals and there's barely any variation in the frame rate at all. You've got the motion blur there, as you say. And the, the kind of, once you've adjusted to the latency, and it is different from 60 FPS, no doubt about it. Sure, of course. Once you've adjusted to the latency, it's still a fantastic experience. And it's just the fact that it is solid. That extends to the visuals as well. The quality of the visuals is just outstanding from start to finish, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, I love the way it looks. The foliage in particular is hugely improved over the last game, I feel. Like, the forests look dense here, and the way the light filters through the trees and everything. It's, it's nice. Really impressive. Well, I think for me, one of the nice things though is obviously, as we said, 30 frames per second does actually work pretty well in this game, but Forza Horizon 3 is also coming to the PC, right? So uh -huh. presumably, at least from what they told me at E3, they are planning to allow users to run with an unlocked frame rate. Yeah, and um, that would be really, really a big upgrade, I think, uh, for, for this particular game, certainly in terms of adding the sort of additional feel to the experience, the kind of pinpoint latency that you kind of want from it. Yeah. So I'm going to be interested to see what kind of hardware is required. To get that, yeah. If you recall the Forza engine running on Apex, Motorsport Apex on PC, that was tight. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, we're talking about 1080p 60 on a GTX 970. That was doing like 1440p with tons of MSAA. So I'm really looking... Yeah, easily. It's the same engine, essentially. I mean, obviously, it's an, an offshoot version of it, but all of the stuff that Playground does gets reincorporated back into the core code base so you know it's kind of like two different approaches producing two very different experiences but it is the same core technology so hopefully that level of PC optimization we saw in Apex will be here as well I'm really looking forward to it yeah so it's nice then that there's kind of that option of course because I feel like they're giving Xbox users a very solid experience here but PC users, if you want, have the opportunity to boost things up further with the higher frame rate and better image quality. So it's not like you're getting a great PC version and a bad console game or vice versa. This is like, well, at least presumably we should end up with two very good versions of the game on all platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I'm curious about the 4K experience for PC. Yeah. I've got an inkling that uh, this will be kind of forward compatible, if you like, to Scorpio a bit further on down the line. Uh -huh, I think so. Um, I mean, if they're doing the work for it now, and it's the same with Gears 4, if they're doing the work, if they're doing the 4K textures, if they're producing that code and those assets now, then it's kind of like a no-brainer that it would be just out of the box working for Scorpio. Maybe there would be a download to, to enable those features, etc. But it kind of just stands to reason that it would be doable. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I mean, the PC, in many ways, um, I mean, that's what Microsoft want to do with Scorpio. They want to produce that kind of top-end PC experience on a home console. Now, obviously, there are limitations there. It's going to be 30 hertz, not 60, I dare say. Yeah, I'm sure. But, you know, we're getting a preview of that now. And uh, speaking of previews, there's that uh, water reflect I was telling you about. Yeah, I, st I still like that. Like Drive Club, it has the way the water sort of like runs off the windshield as you use your wipers and it yeah. sort of collides with the others. I mean, I think it's just a texture trick, but it looks really nice. Yeah, now you can see it on the external views oh, yeah. as well. I was wondering whether you could just switch view and get rid of a distracting effect for, from the driving, <laughs> but no, you can't. It's there, whatever oh, it's, you do. <laughs> they're trying to prevent you from cheating online, I guess, you know? <laughs> But yeah, it's all looking pretty good. I'm really looking forward to playing this uh, in more depth. One feature which they were talking about, I mean, obviously they've got the co-op now and they've got this drone feature that they're adding where you can actually have one of the players taking control of a filming drone who kind of just swoops around all of the different oh, yeah. cars as they're driving and they're producing 
Uh, the aim here is to produce some really nice video for YouTube and sharing and whatnot, which I'm really looking forward to oh, seeing. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, I think they need to add it to the replay, though, so you can actually film yourself, because I don't think that feature is currently in there at the moment. So uh, that's going to be interesting. But yeah, now we're looking at a kind of nighttime scene. And again, this is going to be one of those situations where you think, I wonder how this is going to look in 4K. <laughs> yeah, and HDR, uh, of course. Uh, sorry, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> HDR is obviously going to be available out of the box for the Xbox One S. And one thing I should say is that this video was taken at a Microsoft press event and it was running on Xbox One S hardware. So there is a very, oh. very slight uh, GPU boost here. Uh, I expect the experience to be pretty much like for like on the original box though. I mean, Playground really know their optimization. They just haven't really let us down on any any of their titles yet. No, not at all. Yeah. It's been great. So yeah, really looking forward to this one. I was really impressed with it and I'm looking forward to playing more. But that's kind of all we got for you right now. Uh, do like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from Digital Foundry. And from me, thanks for watching. See you later.